What do you think makes a person attractive? Um, well, firstly, I notice um, looks. Like nice hair, complexion, that's like the right height for you. I don't know, their hair. People smile, if someone has a great smile, or if they've, like, just the certain people that they come in, they just light up a room. I like girls with nice eyes and um, a nice bum. For me, at first, it's music. I like seeing what music they're into. Uh, I think what makes a person distractive is more their personality than their looks. Um, well, I think it really depends on what people view as attractive. Some people think it's uh, looks, some people think it's skinny, some people think it's bigger. I think it's very subjective, so it depends on the individual. Um, personality can come into it a lot too, but I do know that the media does present it as a physical thing. We live in a world where the majority of people care about the way they look and care how other people perceive them. Body image is the way you think about yourself or the way you see yourself. Unfortunately, in our generation, many people have low self-esteem and do not think very highly of themselves. If you could change anything about your body and looks, what would it be and why? Um, well, my, my nose. <laughs> I don't know. Probably take off the hair and just less hair on my body. Uh, and also, I could possibly lose a few kilos. I want bigger breasts. <laughs> how much self-esteem is linked to how attractive you feel? Mm, I'm not sure how to answer that, but like uh, my self-esteem is mostly like how people treat me. Like if they treat me like, yeah, you're a cool chick, then I, I'm like more confident because I'm just like, oh cool, people like me. Well, just judging on kind of the research that I've done before, um, they seem to think that people who view themselves as more attractive, so view themselves, not necessarily other people think they're attractive, tend to have a higher self-esteem. People who view themselves as unattractive, regardless of if society thinks they are, tend to have a lower self-esteem. But again, it just depends on what people perceive um, as attractive or not, or what an individual sees as attractive. You're always more harsh on yourself. Do you think boys are as concerned with body image as girls? I don't, yes they are, but I don't think as much as girls. Yes, they do. I can't see a reason why a boy wouldn't want to look as good as they possibly could and why a girl wouldn't want to look as, possible, as good as they possibly could. I think, you know, maybe, maybe the girls have makeup and maybe the girls have hair, but the boys have, have, you know, want to make their hair look good, they want to make sure they're dressed nicely. Not everybody, yeah. you know, some girls maybe aren't concerned with that and some boys aren't concerned with that. But I don't think it's boys or girls more or less, yeah. I think it's people. Um, there is a lot of research coming out on boys as well, but it might not be that girls have more of a problem, it's just that girls tend to speak about it more and boys tend to not. I think boys are just as concerned with body image as girls are, and I think that uh, it can hit different age groups at different times. There is the same amount of saturation of um, body image in the media or negative body image in the media in the fact that uh, the ideals are not easy to adhere to. So I think both boys and girls are facing the same issues. Having a low self-esteem can lead to mental disorders such as depression, anorexia and bulimia. Anorexia is the third most common chronic illness among teenagers. Eating disorders have doubled in 20 years. According to the Eating Disorders Victoria Foundation, approximately 91% of women are unhappy with their body shape and only 5% of women actually have the body that the media thinks is, quote, perfect. The ideal body type as depicted by the media is thinness for females and a muscular frame for males. 95% of all people with eating disorders are aged between 12 and 25. More than 40% of boys in high school exercise regularly to try and increase their muscle mass. 38% of boys in high school have admitted to using protein supplements. 20% of teenagers will experience depression before they hit adulthood. With the media constantly telling us how to look, how are we supposed to feel comfortable with our own body shapes and our own characteristics? What part can schools play in helping students feel more secure about themselves and their body image? Um, I think schools play a really important role because we've got to try and encourage you guys to think outside the box a bit, like you are okay people. 
Um, you know, you may not have the flashiest clothes or the most trendy hairstyle. You might get pimples, you know, whatever. Like, you're still a good person. So your self-esteem really is about valuing who you are. Well, look, I mean, I think making this TV show and asking me these questions is going to help you guys maybe in terms of, in terms of that, but also discussions in class. So we do a health program here. We yeah. talk about body image and health. Um, also, getting to, getting to know other people getting to getting to be part of a community where there's all different kinds of people with different personalities and different appearances, different backgrounds, yeah. and then realising that that's okay. In fact, it's not even okay, it's actually pretty good. I think the most important part that schools can play in um, giving young people more security in their body image is through education. So understanding that what you see is not reality and understanding that all media forms uh, have their own agenda. There is a reason that they are showing you what they're showing you. So young people need to understand that what they're seeing can be manipulated and that they don't necessarily have to believe everything they see.